Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to give you a brief review of this brand new drywall sander that I was sent to check out. And it's called Gilmore. It's got some cool features and some things I don't like about it so much, but they all do. So we're gonna go over all that right after this. Okay, if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel here at That Kilted Guy Videos. My name is Guy Persala. I've been doing drywall for over 35 years and mostly repairs and patches and that for like the past 15 or 18 years. And today what I wanna do is go over this drywall sander. I actually have three of them now. Here's two right here. And my third one is my oldest and one of my favorite, which is my Porter cable. But these two do have some advantages and they do work pretty well in some ways. So we're gonna go over that today. I'm gonna test this one out though. This is my main goal. I have tested this one and showed it and compared it to the uh, Porter cable in this video. So if you wanna check those out, there's a link down in the description. You just click that down arrow right below the video and that description will open up or show more if you're on your PC. Now, um, they sent this to me at no charge, so this is not a sponsored video, I'm not getting paid. They just wanted me to check it out, so I'm gonna give you my honest review of this thing. And I can tell you that every drywall sander I've used has its positives and its negatives. I don't know if there is a perfect one, one of the best ones I think that's out there is called a Festool. I've never used it because it's over a thousand dollars just for the sander. And for what I do, I've, I only break these out like once every month or two. And for a short while, it's not worth my investment. But if you're a pro, look into that Festool. And if you've got one, let me know what you think, how it compares to these. And hey, it would mean a lot to me if you would just take a second and click on that thumbs up and subscribe button right below the video because that's what helps drive YouTube to show my videos more. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by my birthday. I'll be 60 on June 10th of this year, 2021. So I'm semi-retired. I'm doing this one because I wanted to help this lady out. She has cancer, she's going through chemo, and she um, they're having to sell their house because of all the expense of the chemo. You know, in America here, we don't really have the best health care. So I'm trying to do this really cheap. I bid it uh, at a really fair price, and then I'm doing a lot more than I said I would. So first, let's get into this. Um, this is a unique design here because this one doesn't require a vacuum cleaner. It's supposed to hook right straight up to this bag and contain it in there. So let's see which end do I hook in here. Okay, so I've got this hooked up to the bag now, and I believe that's all you do. You plug it in and you start using it and it's going to somehow blow that in here. There must be like a little blower in this head unit. Now, one of the things I'll point out, first of all, is one of the disadvantages of this style, including the WAN and others, I think even Festool does this, is the motor is all up here. You can see the motor right there, and that puts the weight out here where it's harder on you because of the leverage of it. So you can see the, the balance point of this, even with the hose attached. And if I took the hose off, it'd be worse, but, oh, I see a spring loose. The balance point is right about here. So apparently there's a spring come loose from something here. Let me see what it goes to. I have no idea. Probably came loose in shipment, but wow. Uh, yep. 
issue number one. I have no idea where that spring goes. And the drawing here is not the greatest, so I'm not sure that it's gonna do me any good. I may have to go on Amazon and look and see where the heck that spring goes. Okay, I cannot figure out where that spring goes. I think it's gonna work okay without it, but I'll have to go online right now. I'm using my phone to record the sound. Hopefully it's a little better here. We're in a very echoey room like you often are. So this one has these suction holes here, and then they also vacuum suck around here is the normal way these work. The porter cable only sucks from around the side and it does pretty good. So I don't think that's necessary, absolutely. But in this case, it may help with this design. This one also has one cool feature that I like, which is this LED strip around the edge here. Now, let's see, I can turn that on and you can see it goes all the way around. So that's gonna be handy for seeing edges in that that you're trying to sand. So it's kind of a cool feature. The other feature that's nice about it, it is length adjustable. So you just loosen this and you pull this tube out. And I can tell you these tubes are really stiff because they have to hold a suction here. But I lubed it up. It was so stiff I couldn't even get the thing in here. I fought with it. So I put some WD-40 on it. Works a lot better. It's the same thing with the wind. It's also length adjustable. I'm gonna keep it at the shortest because this is a really short room. This is actually plywood. This is a turn of the century house. So this is plywood with uh, texture over it and mud. It's really flimsy too. But that's how they built them back then. So this one has a control on and off right here and a speed governor right here which most of them have and then it has you can grip it like this or if you're doing higher ceilings that's when you would use this grip back here extend it out so it kind of has two grips here otherwise let's see the other feature that's nice about this is it does come with this carrying bag, which that's handy to keep all your sandpaper and that together. So we're gonna just do a little bit of test sanding with this today. This is 80 grit. I'm gonna start out with that, but I'm probably gonna switch to this 24 grit. Now this is really aggressive, but I'm trying to knock down the peaks and kind of smooth this ceiling out a little bit because I'm gonna fix a bunch of bad joints in here and then I'm gonna skip trial this thing for them. And I'm doing all that, like I say, really cheap so that they can get the most money they can out of this. One other thing I wanna point out is that because of the motor being out there and all, it, it's gonna be tiring. This is a great tool if you're gonna do much sanding, but just know that this is fairly heavy. I'm gonna try and get the weight of this and put it on the screen, but it feels really heavy when it's out here. All of them do a little bit, but my porter cable has the motor down here, which helps that balance quite a bit. But a lot of them do this design and you just have to rent and bear it. So it's gonna be a workout on your shoulder. Okay, I'm gonna tell you one last advantage of this. There are several of them out there like this, but they cost. If you go buy like a porter cable, you're gonna spend over $400 and a Festool, you're gonna double that. I think they're over a thousand. These are just over a hundred. So for just over a hundred dollars, you can save yourself a lot of work in manual sanding. And usually the dust collection is really good. We're gonna see how good this is. Now sanding this shouldn't make near as much dust as say sanding the raw drywall, which we're gonna do that too, but we're gonna compare both. Now let's get that light on. So far, no dust in my face. I haven't felt anything. 
and it seems to be doing really good. I like the light feature. I forgot about one other feature that I've always wished my Porter cable has, which, let's see how it works here. You can remove this when you need to sand right up tight to an angle or something. It'll give you just a little bit closer sanding. And I'm always like a half inch or so short of getting close to a wall, so that should help a little bit. Now we're gonna switch to the 24 grit to see how that does. Now note that the holes don't line up like they should, but it still should suck from around the edges. Okay, and if you saw any dust fall out like that, they all do that. So you just have to be aware of that. I'll see how much is in the bag here so far, but the real test is gonna be sanding the dry coated drywall mud areas. Okay, this is a big patch I had to do for a really bad ceiling repair. I'll do a separate video on that. And you can see some dust gets away right there. That was my fault. If you don't hold these things tight to the ceiling, they will shoot dust out. Now I tried an 80 grit pad and it was too aggressive. It couldn't keep up, but even my Porter cable can't a lot of times on solid mud. Once I switched to a 150 or 220, it did fine. Better than I expected even. So here's my final take on this sander. Overall, I think it's a decent sander. Now, the person I would recommend this for is someone who doesn't want to lug around a vacuum cleaner or maybe you don't own one. If you want the simple design like this or if you like any of these features like these LED lights and the removable side, hey, this thing will get the job done for you and save a lot of dust. Now, there are other models out there to consider. If you want to hook up to a vacuum, there's others that will do that. And for pros, if you're going to be using these a lot, I would recommend going ahead and investing in something like a Porter cable or a Festool. But now they actually have cordless drywall sanders. You still have to hook up to a vacuum, but you do have that freedom of no cord. And I can see some advantages, so I plan to review those fairly soon. And hey, before you go, as a lot of you know, I put these videos out for free and it's a lot of work. An average video can take me 8 to 15 hours just to shoot and edit. And then there's all the promotion time and there's actually quite a bit of expense in doing this. Uh, thousands of dollars in equipment. Uh, we have all kinds of expenses. So if you'd like to show your support for this channel, you can do so by looking in the description right below this video. I'll put some links to our Patreon account, our YouTube membership, and some other ways. But the free way you can show your support is give us a comment down below, a thumbs up, and be sure and subscribe and help me hit that 100,000 subscriber mark by June 10th of this year, 2021. Until the next video, I hope everybody takes care, be safe, and we're looking forward to a much better 21. I'll see you on the next video, everybody. Take care.